What good is a perfect Bible with horrible theology? You don't want to miss a second of this video. You might want to sit down for this one. If you're driving, be careful. If you have a heart condition, you may want to consult your physician and ask if your heart is healthy enough to watch this video. The vast majority of independent fundamentalist Baptists are King James only. Why? Let's listen to the immensely popular internet IFB pastor, Robert Breaker, as he tells us why. So I encourage you to study more about the King James Bible. Why be King James only? Because it's the only word of God in English that has caused more revival than any other version. This book has outsold any other book on the face of the earth. The King James 1611 authorized version. Yes, we're dogmatic, King James only. Yes, we're fanatical, because we know there's a satanic conspiracy against God's Word, against the King James Bible. Someone doesn't want you to have what God said, and someone wants to cut up the Word of God with scissors and take verses out that they don't like. Unless you have a King James Bible, you don't have a Bible. There you go, folks. Unless you have a King James Bible, you don't have a Bible. Don't believe me? Listen to Tony Hudson. Do you honestly think the Southern Baptist Convention, they don't even have a Bible? You're right. You're right. The Southern Baptist Convention yeah. don't even, sir, they don't even have a Bible. Yeah. Right, How are they going to do anything? They don't even, you go to Sunday school classes, First Baptist Church, and nine books in an adult Sunday school class, and all of them saying a different thing. Yeah. Uh, don't bow your head on it or you pray you. Yeah. This is an independent Baptist church like I saw. I thought I, I, Rooster on in his own barn. You ought to ring his neck and make chicken and dumplings out of him. Somebody say amen. Yeah. But what good is a perfect Bible with horrible theology? The IFB is rife with bad theology, bad doctrine, unbiblical preaching, and emotionalism. And it needs to change. The focus on revivalist messages, legalism, and tradition have become the primary focus of many IFB pastors. Listen to Tony Hudson describe how a church is like a good woman. How much investment do you have in this that's woman? Good. Oh, yeah, you had to buy a ring unless you some cheap something. You took her out to good places like Crystal. Somebody say amen at Hardy's. Somebody say amen. But wait, wait, you took her on dates and, and you spent some money on her. You made an investment in her because her values above real. A good, good church is like a good woman. They're hard to find and they're worth something. That's right. That's exactly they're worth something. What, what, are you, what are you putting into the church? The IFB tradition has become an idol to many of these people. Here's another Tony Hudson clip where he was preaching on what Job didn't have. And all had. He didn't have King James. He didn't have that. All he had was a tradition, one tradition of burnt offerings. Yeah. And he continually did it. He didn't change. Yeah. Come temporary. You know what that means? Come means get your attention. Temporary means for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. What he did lasted, he said he did it continually. Yeah. Yeah. Years and years, he just kept on doing the same thing the same way. Yeah. Now back home, it's about hog killing time. It'll be cold next week, and there'll be a whole lot of black, black, black iron, black, black iron pots, and there'll be a whole—I mean, there'll be a whole lot of hog killing going on in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We still do that. Yeah. Everybody, we got meat houses yeah. and salt. Everybody okay? Yeah. They ain't no books on that. I know exactly where to shoot a hog with a 22 short, and he'll fall in his tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I can pop him with the butt end of an axe, and he'll fall in his tracks, be dead as a, a graveyard, dead, dead as a hammer. I know how to scald and I know how to scrape. I know how to render lard. I know how to strain it through cheesecloth. I know how to grind sausage. I know how to mix up. There ain't no book on that. It's a tradition. It's a tradition that's been handed down. It's an unwritten practice. All, all Job had was tradition. All Job had was his tradition. I'm not trying to roast anyone. I'm trying to rescue someone. If you listen to these messages, you'll hear a roar of amens from the audience. When I was younger, I would have been right there with them. I was taught that this is the kind of preaching that I was to aspire to. This is the kind of preacher that I needed to be. But no more. We need expositors. We need exegesis, not eisegesis. We don't need springboarding from a text. We need exposition of the text. 
These guys will literally preach stuff that isn't even in the Bible. When I read this text, I see clearly there's some things missing. Stay with me. I read the story and there's a partner missing. I've looked at it every which way. I've turned it sideways and I've looked at it backwards and read it. And I mean, somewhere there's a, there's a parent missing. You say what you want to, but mama ain't nowhere in this story. I don't know. She might have been getting her nails done. She, she might have been at the tanning bed. She might have been working out. You know, a lot of mothers today are more interested in their figure than they are their family. That's a disgrace, ma'am. Hey, man, you spend more time in the gym than you do in the kitchen. Something's wrong somewhere. Oh, yeah. I don't know where mama was. She might have been at a women's meeting. I don't know where she went, but I know where she wasn't. She wasn't in this story. 2 Timothy 4.2 says to preach the word. This is not it. This is literally preaching what is not in the word. We do not have the right to do what this professor of homiletics did in that clip. Did you hear what I just said? Dr. Tony Hudson teaches homiletics. That's the art of preaching or writing sermons. This is the blind leading the blind, but it's not new. Let's go back in time to the namesake of Hiles Anderson, that IFB bulwark, Jack Hiles. And he gets dangerously close to Mormon doctrine in the message, heaven is a place. So where is heaven? <clears throat> heaven is a planet. Heaven's a planet like Jupiter's a planet. Heaven's a planet like Mars is a planet. Heaven is a planet in the constellation. Uh, in a constellation, it's in the universe. Heaven <clears throat> is a real planet, and it's in the northern part. Astrologers tell us that, that, that there is in the northern part of the planetary system an empty spot. A place where, they can, where, where the, uh, the equipment and machinery and telescopes and so forth cannot see anything. Uh, there are stars everywhere, but there's that empty spot up there. Well, that's where heaven is. They say every once in a while, I love this, they say every once in a while that there's a flash comes from that spot. They don't know what it is. I know what it is. Somebody's going to heaven. They're opening the door to welcome them here home. And <clears throat> so uh, uh, heaven is a place because it is a direction. Then we have people like Robert Breaker that eclipses the followings of these other men with nearly 700,000 followers. People will defend Robert Breaker with almost a rabid following. Yet Robert Breaker has at least on two occasions come extremely close to setting a date for the rapture without actually setting a date for the rapture. And I'm just trying to be nice when I say that. Listen to this clip titled, September 23rd, 2015, What Will Happen? So you look at the Bible and you look at these things, and I've known for years that September 23rd was an important date because to me that's when Jesus was born. That was the birth date of my Savior. He was born around September 23rd. And how interesting that this year, 2015, it just so happens that that day is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Interesting. Why did it fall on that day? Well, I want to look at these candlesticks because what if God hid the day of the rapture in the Old Testament? And what if it was hidden in this candlestick? When I went to Bible school, they taught me that there are a lot of hidden truths in the Bible. <laughs> and this just might be one of them. Then, when nothing happened in 2015, he doubled down on September 23rd, 2017. 1947, Israel became a nation. Jesus is talking about Israel says, This generation shall not pass. In the Bible, a generation is about 70 years. So you add seven to that, 70 years to 1947, what do you get? 2017. <laughs> Something is pointing to the year 2017, September 23rd. Even the constellations and the stars are pointing to something that make you scratch your head and go, Hmm, maybe I should start reading the Bible. I'll leave you with one more. This next clip is the reason why I did this video. I was researching for a video on Bible numerics or Bible numerology when I came across this fool's gold of a nugget from Robert Breaker on the Trinity. You won't believe what you're about to hear. And God said, are you ready for this? 
Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Three times God says a plural. Us, our, our. God is a trinity. God is one God with three parts. Now how a person can't understand this, I don't know. But it says that God created man in his own image, verse 27. In the image of God created he them. So one God with three parts, just as there's one person with three parts. God is a trinity. People say, well, trinity is not in the Bible. Yeah, the word trinity is not there, but the doctrine is. You see, we are a triune being. That means we have three parts. We are one person, but we have three parts. So when you look at me, well, all you see is my body. And I'm sorry you have to look at it. I know I'm ugly. <laughs> but when you see me, you see the body. What are, what are the three parts? Let me write them here real quick. Body, soul, and spirit. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses are the worst about this because the Jehovah Witness cult teaches that there's no trinity. And they teach that you have no soul. And that when you die, you don't go to hell because they believe there's no such thing as hell. But as you read the Bible, the Bible says the body, this is the outward part. It says inside the body is a soul and inside of that is a spirit. Well, when you're born, you're born dead. So you're born without a spirit. The spirit's empty. When you die without Jesus Christ, the soul goes to hell. Or if you're saved, the soul goes to heaven. I don't understand how these people say, I don't believe in a trinity, when it's all throughout the Bible. But what we find is that even though we are created in God's image, we can't do what God can do. God, somehow or another, can do something that we cannot do in that God can divide his three parts whenever he feels like it. And yet we cannot. We, our three parts, are together and cannot be separated. So when you see me, you see my body, my soul, my spirit. I can't take my body and put it over in Texas, take my soul, put it up in Alaska, and then take my spirit and put it down in, in, in Key West, Florida. I can't separate myself. The only way I'll have any separation is when I die and my soul separates from my body. As it says in Genesis, that uh, I believe it was Rebecca died. And it says, and her soul was in departing. So, I am made in the image of God with three parts, just as God has three parts. But God can do something that I can't do. What are the three parts of God over here? Let's correspond those three. What's the body of God the Father? Jesus. What's the soul? Will that be God the Father? And then what's the spirit? I'll just abbreviate it. That's the Holy Spirit. So the three parts of God corresponds with our three parts. Just like God said, we are made in His image. But yet God takes those three parts and can separate Himself. And we can't. God does not have parts. An internet IFB pastor with 679,000 subscribers is teaching rank heresy to his followers. He has the audacity to call out Jehovah's Witnesses heresy on the Holy Spirit, but then he utterly destroys the doctrine of the Trinity himself. This is the result of many so-called Bible colleges today that offer an IFB Bible education and a cheap degree. This is the fallacy of the no creed but Christ crowd, that if they would only look back at history and the Athanasian creed, they would clearly see that this type of teaching is every bit as heretical as the Jehovah Witnesses' false teaching. I know that some will accuse me of cherry picking to feed a narrative. These are the heroes of the IFB today. These are the ones who have everyone else's ears. Hiles, Hudson, Breaker, and the many others like them fuel this revivalist style of preaching that has about the same spiritual benefits as nutrients in iceberg lettuce. None. I, I could have gone on and on. I could post hours of this stuff. But there are other channels to do that. My purpose in showing these clips is to ask the question, what good is it to think you have the only preserved, inspired, inerrant, infallible Bible in the English language if you're going to butcher it in atrocious preaching? Recently, 
I was told a young preacher cut from this same mold told his Sunday school class that there was too much of a focus on theology and what we needed to do was focus on the Bible. We are dooming a generation to ignorance, heresy, and a distorted view of the Bible and church history. But at least they'll feel good about having a King James Bible. There is a dearth of sound theology in the IFB today. Thankfully, there are pockets of sound churches and pastors who focus on biblical theology, but more is needed. And I'm asking you to please pray for my friends and loved ones who are trapped in the mirage of this vast desert, largely void of biblical theology.